Okay, so I'm going to do another top 10 list, and it's going to be the spear infantry that the game has to offer. Now, what you want from spears is pretty clear. You want them to be able to defend well. You want them to be cost effective. You want them to be able to hold the line generally well. And with spears, it's worth saying that you're generally not going to be attacking with spears from the off. You might be using some of the low tier spears as cannon fodder, certainly, like the orc band, but what I'm looking at is what spears are best at the traditional spear roles of warding off cavalry and holding a line against a charge. So we'll get right into it. I've done a few tests and I've mapped out what my top 10 would be, and it is worth saying that my opinion does come into this again, like where I think quality overrides the quantity and where I think that the value for money plays a bigger role has affected the list somewhat but nonetheless we'll start off at number 10. So at number 10 we have Dale's Ravanian Gadrout and the stats on these guys are pretty good all round. They have a defense of 13 which is the important one. Their attack is 8 and their charge is 4 which again less important but nice to know particularly against cavalry. The reason these guys are on the list is because of how you know, cost efficient they are and how well they fit into Dale's army composition. They have 550 each unit. They'll increase after three. The reason they're not higher on the list though is because the units just above them do the whole cost efficiency thing slightly better. And they're basically the same stats. The two units above them essentially have very similar stats, but they are cost efficient in different ways, it must be said. They can form Skilltron, which is useful in a siege in particular, but in a field battle I would say it's only really useful for covering a retreat, which is something that you generally don't want to be doing because it means you're losing the battle. But yeah, in a siege, Skilltron is very nice to have, and it's what puts these guys above the Greenway Guards of Eriador, which are not on the list because they cannot form a formation, and their stats and their cost are basically similar to the first three in this list, but the inability to do a formation is always a bit of a shame. Skilltron will up the survivability of your unit considerably, but in a field battle it's not terribly useful because it's just so easily walked around because of how small it is. But potentially it can be used very, very well at the siege. So, and again, these uh, these aren't the most scientific tests. Like I'm only fighting two Breland militia. Like I'm going to win this fight pretty handily. But again, in formation, in guard mode, bracing getting the work done and here they go in formation. They're a pretty important part of Dale's army as well because you're going to want to defend your archers and these are a unit which really do allow you to do that in addition to their barding herd of course but these are a more utilitarian barding herd as it were because these guys are much easier to chase off cavalry with these guys than it is with pikes in formation. And of course you can also use these guys to swing an infantry fight if that's necessary. Like you don't really want to be using spears offensively in the early parts of the battle if you can help it, but if you want to sort of hammer your victory home, there's nothing wrong with throwing spears into a charge. Break the enemy once and for all. I like the look of the, the Dale infantry in general as well. Vanian the droughts with these like Norman teardrop shields and their helms. They look like longbowman helms, actually. That's cool. Only half the enemy force remains. Slow work doing a pole arm to pole arm fight, though. But, you know, it gets the point across of what these units are all about. So, yeah, that's the first entry on the list, the Ravanian Gadrouts, and now we will move on to number 9. So, at number 10, we have Mordor's Muranon Guards. Now, I said in the last position that the Ravanian Gadrouts were really kept off because these guys are a little bit more cost efficient. And I mean that by they're only very slightly cheaper in that they're 530 as opposed to 550 per unit. They, like the Ravanian Gadrouts, can have three before the cost increases. But really what puts these guys over the top is the numbers in their unit, which is considerably more. They're much more difficult to be outflanked. And just in general, Mordor's army they fit very, very well into Mordor's army. These guys will allow you to throw off the cab disadvantage you'll have as Mordor, because of course, you know, spears. And also, these guys can be used essentially to hammer home your advantage in a siege. Offensively, these are probably one of the better spears, just because of how many of them are. You can force your way through the enemy with how many numbers you have, how much numbers you have. 
and that's really they fit into the Mordor philosophy almost perfectly. Of course, they can form skill charm as well. The stats on them are slightly worse than the Ravanian Gadrauts. It must be said they have one less score in attack at seven and one less in defense at twelve. But nonetheless, the numbers in them and how well they fit into Mordor's army just put them above the Gadrauts, in my opinion. Pretty neat looking unit as well. Like I know that the orcs in general look a bit naff, but like I like all the spears and just the aesthetic of, of Mordor, really. They fit very well into it. Of course Mordor do have the orc band as well, but orc band are trash. Ah, of course. Sure, we'll move into you. Surround the Bree militia. Of course, the one problem these guys do have, just like the Ravanian Gadrauts must be said, but more so with these guys, is Archer Fire. They will be thinned out considerably by Archer Fire, and as Mordor, you're not going to be winning many skirmisher fights, unlike Dale. So that is a, a noticeable weakness that you're going to have as Mordor, and it's worth mentioning. But nonetheless, I think the pros of this unit do make up for its cons in general, and they are a great addition to Mordor. These guys are pretty perfect actually for supporting like an Olag high charge. These are the only spear I would recommend you use offensively like a lot. Most other spears you want to use defensively but these guys more often than not it's okay to use them on the attack. Although I don't charge them into like heavy infantry obviously because they're gonna lose unsupported anyway. Very good symbiotic relationship with the Olag High, these guys. Olag High can be overwhelmed, these guys can be outclassed. Together, they will they will not do you wrong. And in this like it's a it's a slow going fight, but they win, of course. So that is number nine. The Orcs finally get some love on these lists. At number eight, we have Harad's Southron Warband. Now, the stats on these guys, eight, twelve, and four. Is essentially a little bit better than the Moranon Guards, but a little bit worse than the Ravanian Gadrauts. So why are these guys above both for the reasons that I've listed before? Well, obviously they can form skill charm, they can do everything that a good spear can do, but really the thing that really catches my eye with these guys is how cost effective they are. They are remarkably cheap at 470 each, and you can have four before the cost increases, which means your spear contingent is going to be very high, and it really allows you to push home a cab advantage with Harad, because you're going to have some decent cab available as Harad, Mumakil or no Mumakil. And having four spears, or maybe even five spears on the field, in addition to a pike line, means enemy cav is going to be negated somewhat. They're not going to be able to charge into your infantry and do quite as much damage as they wanted without damaging themselves considerably as well. And this allows you to really assert a certain cav dominance, which means on a pitch battle, these guys can really swing it in your favour. And of course, they'll do all the stuff that you know, a Ravanian Gadrout will do. They'll defend an archer force if that's what you want. They'll hold the line reasonably well against a charge. And yeah, really it's the cost efficiency of these guys which puts them over the top in my opinion. Of course in a siege in Skilltron these guys will do relatively well. The only slight problem is, again, they will get focused down by archers quite a lot more often than the Ravanian Gadrouts because Harad's skirmisher force, while it's decent, better than Mordor's for example, it's not going to be a dominant skirmisher force unless you're against an orc faction. So, you know, it's worth saying that these guys could well be focused down by enemy archers if you're not careful. They're not the most heavily armoured guys, but they, you know, basically they're on par just about with the Gadrauts. The Gadrauts have one more score in defence, so they'll do slightly better. But, nonetheless, these guys aren't terrible. They're pretty much, one of the reasons I do like Harad is how cost effective they are and these guys are a big part of that. Nice looking spears as well for the Harad warband. The Bree militia not doing a particularly good job. Of course. They're pretty much set up to lose this fight. When I was testing these guys out at like chasing down Cav, obviously every spear is going to be good at that but because there are so many of them, it's much more difficult for the Cav to like worm their way into your lines. If you have four or five, it's very difficult for the enemy cav to get in and amongst your more vulnerable units, which is really, you know, a very good point for Harad because it means 
their very good cavalry suddenly becomes much more dominant on a field battle. I do like Harad. Real soft spot for the faction in general. Even though, you know, in terms of mathematical efficiency, they do have some some shortcomings compared to some of the other human factions in particular. But nonetheless, this is a very nice unit that they have to their name. Sooner or later, these Bree militia will break. Ah, uh, the Easterling announcer. Oh, my general died. It's a bit unfortunate. The Bree shields. That's pretty cool. And there we go. So there we go, that's number 8, and now we will move on to number 7. So, at number 7, we have a surprisingly cost-efficient unit from the Elves, and that is, of course, the Sylvan Spearmen, the Sylvan Elves. This is the only other unit other than the Southron Warband you can have four of before the cost increases, and these guys are only 480. There are only 10 more, and they are, of course, higher quality. They have less in their unit, which does hurt them a little bit, but nonetheless, these guys are a very, very cost-effective eff unit, which is surprising considering the Elves usually, you know, not very efficient when it comes to their money, but the Sylvan Elves really did need a unit like this to defend their archers, because their archers are very expensive, obviously, and they need some sort of mainline infantry that can hold the line reasonably well while not being horrendously expensive. And these guys will offer that to the Sylvan Elves. It's something that the High Elves lack. It's kind of the only thing that the Sylvan Elves have that the High Elves genuinely don't. And that's, you know, something worth celebrating. So we'll start the battle. I've decided to move to the having four of them. They're going to be bracing. Good against cavalry, obviously. But really, it's like... It's surprising that an Elven unit is cheap and effective, really. That's not really the sort of thing you associate with the Elves in this game. And yet, here we are. Of course, they do have rather light armor, so enemy archers will you know, do some pretty heavy damage to them. But also it's worth saying that as the Sylvan Elves you're going to be winning most skirmisher fights, so yeah. Well that's not very good. Anyway, um, the Sylvan Elves will generally be winning any skirmisher fights, so these guys sort of weakness to archers is not necessarily going to play a huge part in their sort of effectiveness as it were. But it is something to consider, like if you get caught out of position and these guys start getting shot up, you're going to start losing them for no good reason. This is the closest that either Elven faction has to cannon fodder though, so maybe it's not the end of the world. Oh, that's charging in another unit of Breland Militia. This is going to take a while. Any pole arm fight takes a while, unfortunately. But yes, the Sylvan Spearman. A pretty darn good unit in my opinion. As the Sylvan Elves, I would not expect any Sylvan Elven army composition to be without these guys in at least four in number. Because it allows you to try and close the gap between you and your opponent, because you're inevitably going to have less troops than them on the field, and perhaps even less units as well. Whereas these guys will allow you to sort of balance that out a little bit more. Jesus, it's taken a long time. It's not easy to showcase polearm fights in a quick way. At least not without risking the possibility of losing, because polearms can be easily swamped, and if you get outflanked with polearms, as you saw with the Ravanian Gadrauts fight at number 10, they will lose, which means you need to have your line efficient, you need to make sure that you're in formation with them, otherwise you're effectively wasting them. And I know the spears aren't exactly the best in Medieval 2, and this is effectively Medieval 2 with a paint job, this, it's, they're still a very, very important part of most army compositions, and I do like using spears because they will, they will potentially inflict a lot of money damage on the enemy, which means you're going to be able to close in the jaws for cheaper, essentially. Cheap and cheerful. That's the name of the game with spears, right? That's enough. I've waffled on enough. We win. Now, anyway, we will move on to number 6, and from here on out, the spears start to get considerably better, in my opinion. Okay, so at number 6, it is the Gondor Spearmen. Now, Gondor are a faction with many, many good pole arms, and this is one of them. They can form skill Skilltrom, of course. Their attack score is 7, their defense score is 16, and their charge score is 4. 
The important thing to note there is their defense score of 16. They can take a surprising amount of punishment. And of course, a little bit better under Archer Fire. They're a little bit better armored than the, ar than the archers. The spears that we've seen up till now. They are a little bit more expensive though in general. They cost 620 each. You can have three before the cost increases. But it's worth it as Gondor because of how good their pole arms are across the board. Bit of a defensive faction in general. Particularly in a, um, well, obviously in a siege battle. But... In a pitch battle as well, you're generally going to be slower moving as Gondor, a little bit more careful, unlike the Orcs. But yeah, the Gondor Spears, very good, very good unit. Going to be part of the core of any Gondor army, really. Well armoured. So, not really much to say about Spears. How well they can take a charge, how well they can hold a line, how cost efficient they are. All of these are kind of the only factors that really mattered in deciding which spears I enjoyed the most. In my army composition, of course, Gondor is my favourite faction, so I'm going to have a bit of a soft spot for these guys. That was a poor charge to try and attempt. Not that they could have won really anyway, but I'm going to love the, the Gondorian formation here. Their spears. From here on out, the spears will start to get a bit more expensive. They will also start to get considerably better, in my opinion. Oh my god, these fights. They take... <laughs> There's not really an effective way of demonstrating the spears' effectiveness at what they do in an entertaining manner, because their effectiveness is decided on how long they can hold out against numbers. Of course I'm going to win this fight, the Breland Militia are not doing a very good job here, but of course they wouldn't. <laughs> but yes, the Gondor Spears. Skilltrom is something that they can do as well, which means in a siege battle, on, if you want to do a Minas Tirith siege, defending as Gondor, the Skilltrom formation could well be useful against the superior numbers of Orcs that are going to be coming at you. And there they go. And really what sets these guys apart from those that were below them is their superior defensive score. They're better against archers, naturally, and these are the sorts of things that really matter at the high end when talking about spears. Can they can they take a beating? Hmm. Looks very similar to my troops. Anyway, can they take a beating and can they withstand archer fire? And how good are they how good they are against cavalry is kind of Across the board, all spears are, of course, going to be very good against cavalry, so there is that. Anyway, next up, we'll move on to the top five, the top half. So, the first spear unit in the first half is Isengard's Guards of Orthanc, or Guards of the Orthanc, as it says there. Now, these guys are pretty expensive when it comes to spears, actually. They're 750, and you can only have two before the price increases, but... They are extremely well armoured, and they are considerably more effective than those that are below them. They have an attack score of 8, but the all-important defensive score is 19, which is extremely high. And their charge score is 5, which is slightly better than most spears, but of course you won't generally be charging into anything but cavalry, and that's only because of your extreme bonus against them. The only thing really that kept these guys from getting higher on the list is, one, they are pretty expensive like per unit. You know, it's, it's kind of too expensive compared to those that are above them, which is still slightly less. And those that are above them can all form Shield War, which is better than Skilltron. So, really, while these guys are very effective at shrugging off Archer Fire, maybe slightly more effective than some of the units above them, the lack of ability to form Shield Wall and them being just a little bit too expensive for what they are is what puts them down here in fifth. So let's start the battle. This is also intended to be the general unit of Isengard, it's pretty clear, but you can have two before the price increases, which isn't terrible. And putting your general in a unit which is very durable is a very good idea. So the Guards of Orthanc do serve their purpose in that way as well. In formation, nice. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. What the hell? Top of three militia got all the way in here.
And generally speaking, as Isengard, you're going to be losing most skirmisher fights, so the fact that these guys are good under archer fight is an important aspect of it. Most orc factions have to kind of just sit there and take it and accept deaths, but these guys will stand up reasonably well to archer fire. They're not invincible, of course. Something like elven archers or crossbows are still going to rip through them. But just the fact that they're slightly more survivable is, is a nice thing to have. And here we go with the standard very long drawn out fight. In addition to the Uruk-hai pikemen, Isengard have got a very good polearm contingent. If only a little bit expensive, because Uruk-hai pikes are surprisingly expensive as well. And obviously you're not going to have too many of these guys, but you know. Isengard, very good while in formation. Slightly better than the other orc factions when caught out of it as well. They won't break quite as easily, I've noticed. There we go. So yeah, the Guards of Orthanc. I will say that occasionally i found these guys to be a little lackluster when I've used them, but then that's probably just me misusing them. Because obviously when you're the Orcs, generally speaking, you'll be attacking in a siege. And, you know, the Guards of Orthanc, not the best when attacking in a siege. Like any spears, most spears you're going to be using in a siege are going to be used as cannon fodder. And these guys are certainly not intended to be cannon fodder, so... A word of caution that, you know, these guys, while their stats are good and they are you know, good for what they are, you might find them a little bit lacking in some respects in a practical situation. Anyway, next up is number four. So coming in at number four, we have the first unit able to form Shield Wall on this unit, and that is the Dismounted Royal Guard of Rohan. These guys are, when it comes to cost efficiency, they're kind of cost efficient, because they only cost 640 each, which is surprising value. But the cost does increase after two, so it's it's kind of a balancing act. You may well be able to mass these guys up into a group of four if the funds are decent enough. But even on a sort of low funds game, you'll often see Rohan bringing that royal guard. And why not? They're a very, very good spear unit, if you use them correctly, of course. Spears, if misused, will die terribly, terribly easily. As for the stats, slightly worse than the guards of all thanks. Six, um... There's 8 for the attack score, 16 for the defense, and 4 for charge. That's worse on the defense by 3 points, but their ability to form shield wall, in my opinion, is just too great. And they're better cost efficient, of course, which is all important as spears. And I just like shield wall so much better than skilltron. Practically, it's so much more useful. Provided you use guard mode, of course. Using um, shield wall without turning on guard mode is disastrous in most in most cases, so do remember to switch guard mode on with your shield wall, otherwise you'll start to mushroom out and that's not a good thing. Even with guard mode on, it will occasionally happen, but yeah. The Bree Militia, not going to have the muscle to get through here. You'll notice how few, how um, my troops are dying considerably less here because of the shield wall compared to the previous examples. Skill Tom will have this effect as well. But Skilltron is less practically useful in a battlefield because it's not a line you'll be forming. It's kind of like bubbles on the battlefield. And it's good if you want to sort of slow the enemy up to cover your retreat on a field battle. But other than that, I'd only use Skilltron in a, in a siege. But yeah, hardly any losses. Very cost effective, the Royal Guard, if you use them correctly. And these guys basically have to stand in for the absence of pikemen a lot of the time as well. So... You know, it, it's good that they are this good. I keep trying to charge in. Come on, Bree Militia. You can break. Only half the enemy force remains. Shield wall, easy to outflank, of course. Very tightly knit formation, but generally there will be an army around these Royal Guard under most circumstances, so it's not going to be as easy as just walking around the back and hitting them hammer and anviling them as it were but you know at least it should be we just squeeze in from the side I like the look of the royal guard as well Rohan in general are a good looking faction it's just their effectiveness across the board of course not really my cup of tea but this unit is one of the guiding lights of the faction certainly but they are not quite as good as those above them, and next up we'll have number three. 
So at number three we have the Citadel Guard, and these are essentially a slightly more expensive but statistically better version of the Royal Guard. They have a higher defense score by two, they have it at 18, they have a higher attack score as well, for what that's worth. They also can form shield wall. Their cost per unit is 720, which is, as I said, 80 more than the Royal Guard. But they also can have two before the price increases. And as Gondor, you may well see these guys a lot because they're more affordable than the pikes of Gondor. And they will do a decent job at holding a line as well. Very good armor on these guys as well. They will stand up to a point to archers but of course you know ideally you want to save these guys because they are expensive like while they will be cost effective when the fight begins if they are sort of weakened beforehand you'll start to lose that investment so there is a word of caution on basically all the top three spears while they are very very good at what they do the enemy will try to weaken them before engaging them certainly so make sure that you position them well Keep them in formation as well, obviously. That can go for the Royal Guard as well, but the Royal Guard are slightly more, slightly cheaper. So, and the Royal Guard are basically the heart and soul of Rohan's army. Whereas Gondor and the two factions that have the top two spots have other units that are basically the main attraction. In formation, they're very eager. They seem to be like nudging forward ever so slightly. Here come the Bree militia into the spears. Basically just a super powered Gondor spearman these guys. Wow they do not want to advance. They don't fancy this fight at all do they? Well here they go. Are you gonna charge? Come on guys charge. No they're not gonna do it. Okay well. Well, that was annoying. Damn AI. Well, attack them then. Fucking hell. If we continue like this, we will... Since I've guard, I've also noticed as well, will take a surprising amount of punishment from pikes and the like. I remember one battle I did once where I was Gondor facing off against Isengard. These guys held for basically the whole battle while facing pikes on a hill disadvantage. And that was the general that was the general unit and they did they did very well. They weren't gonna win. They were slowly, slowly losing. But they held for such a long time that it basically became a non issue because of course eventually that comes to the point where the rest of the battle will decide who wins like a pike engagement. Nice looking unit as well. Gondor spears with more armour and a black cape. Go on, route. Route. And there we go. Okay. So, yeah, Gondor Citadel Guard. Exceptional unit, provided you don't waste them, because of course they are a bit more expensive, and while spears are meant to be cost effective. You know, sometimes the elite troops are just straight up better. So, at number two, we have the Sylvan Heavy Spearmen. Now, naturally, these guys are extremely important to the elves because they need to hold while their archers do all the work. And while the Sylvan Spearmen are a lower tier version of doing that, these guys will hold for such a long time. They're basically as good as hold at holding a line as, as pike units only they will have a bit more utility than pike units because of course pikes are basically good for one thing and one thing only. These guys main problem really is that they are super expensive obviously 750 per unit and you can only have two that is only slightly more expensive than Gondor's Citadel Guard to be fair and you will always see these for the elves they're always going to be a part of the Sylvan Elves in particular are going to need these guys badly to hold superior numbers superior forces so let's start the battle Investing in quality sometimes will really pay off, and as the elves, it basically forces you to invest in quality. Great looking units as well, the elven spears, it must be said. Mm. 
love the sort of the like long the long spears they have and the shields as well. As for their stats, you know, they have ten attack, twenty defense, and five charge. Twenty defense is enormous. Like you're not going to be winning any skirmish battles with the elves anyway, but they're going to soak up a lot of low tier archer fire before they start to fall. Of course, firing in archer fire is what you want to do against a formation like this. You're not really going to be able to break through by charging directly into them. That's suicide. Of course, flanking around is what you really want to be doing. These guys will not be able to cover the whole battlefield. They only have 121 men in the unit, but again, in a similar way to the top 10 archer lists, just the elven spears, their quality just shines through so much in a situation like this that, you know, the numbers disadvantage really starts to become a non-issue. Is Immediately the Bree militia will start to drop. The attack score of these guys does actually start to help them when it comes to dealing damage as well, but generally speaking these guys will not be damage dealers. Like the elves rely on their swordsmen and in the high elven case their heavy infantry and particularly their archers to do damage. These guys are for the protection of their army and they will need them. But if you use these guys correctly, that's basically the key, along with their archers, to playing as the elves. And they are just so good. Their cost efficiency is really the only thing I'd call into question, because they are obviously extremely expensive, like most elven units. But in this case, it is so worth it, because no other unit will hold the line as well as they will. I'm going to try and wrap around. One of my units is taking kind of a heavy loss. And this is the danger, of course. Getting wrapped around on will cause these guys to take more losses than you'd want. But provided you set up right, let your archers do most of the work. Come on, break. I know I'm only fighting militia units here, but again, it's only for demonstration purposes. Like, spears in general will all be for the same sort of thing. So, you can just see how well they did. Like, obviously, I did lose a lot because of a flanking maneuver, but, you know, you've got to watch out for them. Make sure you use your spears and archers well, and you're like the Sylvan Elves. And that really only leaves one, and just like with the archers, it's pretty obvious which one that is going to be. And of course, in this case, number one is the other elven unit, the Eldar Enway Spears. But this time, the High Elves do manage to take home the number one spot. And that is, while they are slightly more expensive, at 780 per unit, they can have two, of course, before the price increases. The stats for these guys push them over the top because they have one more defense. And that is all important because it means they are slightly better at surviving against anything, really. Other than that, though, the effectiveness between these guys and the Sylvan Heavy Spears is honestly not going to be terribly noticeable. But just the fact that statistically these guys are slightly better at doing what Spearmen should do means that, you know, objectively these guys are just slightly better. Other than that, though, everything that I said for the Sylvan Elves holds true. You know, they are fairly easily outflanked if you're not careful because, obviously, Shield Wall, they're tight packed and they have not very men in the unit, so you can't spread them too thin. But, you know, particularly in a siege, these guys are a nightmare. Trying to get through them is absolutely horrendous, provided you guard mode, of course, otherwise they'll start to mushroom out of gates, as certain people have learned in the past, including me. But, yeah. Very much an important unit for the High Elves. It must be said that not as important as the Sylvan Heavies are for the Sylvan Elves, because the Sylvan Elves pretty much are reliant on their archers, whereas the High Elves do have the option of trying to use their high quality high end infantry to win them fights as opposed to just relying on their archers but really the the overall tactics are going to be mostly the same you're going to want to be defensive because if you start being aggressive with so few men you're going to end up losing but here come the Bree militia and we're starting to push them back already the armor of the Eldar Enway units just looks so nice as well so they win style points I'm trying to wrap around on me again but it's not really going to work but yeah, there really is no substitute for these guys in terms of spears. They are the best spears in the game. And you need to use them wisely, otherwise you're not going to win as an elven faction. Particularly the Sylvan Elves, but it holds true for the High Elves as well. These guys are such an important unit, because 
they are cost despite being so expensive they are cost effective at throwing back enemy units like you can put these guys in shield wall and have a choke point and you'll be able to throw off a ton of low tier infantry it's going to take really the best the enemy has to try and pour through them or soften them up with skirmishes but again you don't want to get into a skirmisher fight with the elves which means these guys really have all their bases covered and it's a matter of one point in defense that they beat the sylvan elves on this list here they go again and they will break break Ooh. one unit back here one unit of Bree militia taking on Eldar Enray units he is a distinct possibility turned into a bit of a Oh, there we go. Now they'll break. Him, his will lose their will to fight. At least they should be. They're wavering. Waver and break, damn it. So close. So close. The there we go. The the and so there we go. I mean, I know that both the tests I've done so far, well both the lists I've done so far, I've had the elven units be at number one number two and that's because the archers and the spears really are the the best parts of both armies really, to a point anyway. You won't see in any other top ten list I do the elves grabbing the one and two spots, at least unless I'm completely mistaken about how something like heavy infantry works. But that's most unlikely, the dwarves are likely to get that one. But yeah. The elves doing very well in both of the categories I've selected so far. And next, I don't know what I'll do. I think I'll probably try and do heavy cavalry next, which means the kingdoms of men will probably get their chance to shine. Or maybe I'll do horse archers. I don't know. Some sort of mounted unit will be the next top ten list. Hope you enjoyed.